Kiss the Ground, an extraordinary film that opened my eyes. Perfect storm is bearing down upon us. Because just as toxic chemicals kill the microbes in the soil, they also kill the microbes in our bodies. The problem isn't the animal. The problem is where the animals are at. The only goal that makes sense for humanity is drawdown, a year-to-year -year reduction in carbon in the upper atmosphere. Anything else is climate chaos. And it's critical that we have bipartisan action on the topic at hand today. We have to acknowledge the condition our soils are in. Regenerative agriculture can be incorporated into any farming operation and be far better for your bottom line. Hello, my name is Larry O'Connor. I'm the founder of OWC and a board member of Kiss the Ground. About 35 years ago, I started a technology company in Woodstock, Illinois, you know, deep in the, uh, the Midwest, out in farmland country. And in addition to being exposed to technology at a young age, I got to grow up in the country where I got a deep respect for nature and really all the things around me. ODBC was founded on a waste not, want not kind of philosophy. You know, we have great technology, continue to extend the life of technology, enable people to upgrade their systems and self-support their systems. And as OWC evolved and continued to move down that path, you know, it wasn't just about technology to enhance the life of, of the technology that we use every day. We also uh, got directly involved in applying those practices to our own operation through recycling. We invested early in wind power, and as our campus grew, you know, we've invested in solar. The building itself is one of, our headquarters is one of only about 300 LEED Platinum certified new construction projects in the world today. In addition to maximizing the resources of our customers, we've sought to do everything we can with our campus and our operation to maximize those finite resources that we use every day. Fast forward another few years, you know, got an opportunity to view an early cut of Kiss the Ground. I grew up in farmland, but I knew you know, very little about regenerative agriculture or the differences between the conventional farming that had been all around me and what regenerative agriculture offered and you know, how much better it could be for our planet and for our farmers. And in getting involved with the film, became a producer on the film, uh, became a technical advisor of supply technology, I really got involved to see this, this film you know, get over the finish line. And in 2020, Kiss the Ground came out, released on Netflix. It's been seen today by over 10 million people. It was seen by uh, some folks uh, in the UK that ultimately uh, drove regenerative agriculture into the UK Farm Bill. Prior to Kiss the Ground, we had less than 50,000 acres in the US that were considered regeneratively farmed. Today, that number is over 30 million acres and continues to grow. When I learned about what regenerative agriculture meant, I look back and how I was certainly raised from a, a gardening point of view. You know, anything that wasn't what you planted you know, was a weed and needed to be eliminated. And the reality is, is there's a huge, you know, amazing biome beneath the ground. There's amazing natural technology that's been here for billions of years that's brought us the fertile lands that we have today and has the potential not just to continue keeping this land fertile, but bring back land that's been, for lack of a better way of putting it, devastated by the conventional farming and the methods that we use today. Now, it's incredible the biome and, and just the general symbiosis that exists between what grows above the ground and the different microbes and fungi that live beneath the ground. And these are our friends. I mean, these are, I see they're our friends. This is what can bring amazing, amazing biodiversity and incredible output to the different crops, the different foods that you know, we all depend on, the produce that you know, feeds this planet. And it's very important that we come back to depending upon our friends beneath the ground and working uh, you know, with the natural technology that has been evolved and God-given over you know, literally billions of years to ensure that we continue to have harvest. We have less than 55 harvests left the way we currently farm the land. Conventional farming today requires roughly three and a half times the fertilizer per acre than it did just a few decades ago you know, due to degradation of our soil. The choices we make today certainly have a huge impact on you know, what that future looks like. But shifting away from natural processes for dependency on 
the sequestration of, of carbon is a very dangerous path. It's, it's energy intensive, it's financially uh, very expensive, and it will create dependencies that ultimately will take away, in my opinion, from humanity. The alternative to this is regenerative agriculture, which not only gives us the opportunity to protect the land that gives us everything, gives us the bounty that we have today, but ensure that that land is resilient, continues to improve again, and will be here for generations to come. And for farmers who have been more and more pinched every year, now, if you're out there in agriculture, you know, the cost of inputs, the impact of you know, well, bad weather, and there's flooding, hail, you name it, these things have put you know, farmers on the brink. And the other amazing thing about regenerative farming, regenerative agriculture in general, it actually reduces the cost through reduction of input dependency. You have land that increases in, in its resilience, cover crops, uh, carbon content, all these things mean that your land can absorb more water, becomes more bioresilient, and further becomes more productive for the crops that you grow, all without fertilizer, all without these other inputs. You know, right now, you know, conventional land, you know, there's that out there that shows maybe it's a half inch, maybe it's one inch of rain in an hour that conventional tilled land can absorb. Land that's been regeneratively managed and brought back with cover crops can absorb 20 to 40 times as much water without flooding. And these understandings, much of this is new within the last couple decades. We didn't know what was beneath the ground. And the greatest hope we have is shifting back to these practices, bringing back land that used to be fertile. When you go to a regenerative agriculture process, you have land that costs less for the same caloric output. In fact, healthy land with a higher carbon content in the soil through regenerative processes actually are able to produce more per acre than conventional land. The food that's produced on these lands has more nutrient density. It's not just fertilizer driven. You have natural processes, natural, uh, you know, like a biodiverse soil that's providing all the nutrients that these crops need to produce the best output. We're not using pesticides or certainly nowhere near the level of pesticide concentration that we've come to use really over the last couple decades. It's, it's pretty crazy to look back in the 90s versus today, you know, how much pesticide use has gone up. And that's mainly been a problem in the US with GMO. GMO should have been a, a great uh, solution, an opportunity to improve the hardiness of plants Rather, it got, in my opinion, kind of perverted to you know, modify these different uh, crops so they could just handle more pesticides being dumped on them and handle more herbicides being dumped upon them, which is not a great solution since what's bad for the soil is also bad for us. And it's certainly really bad for our farmers and those laborers that work in these fields where these pesticides and other chemicals are being dumped. And you look at our water quality Eliminating the use of inputs also means that the water the runoff, well, you're reducing runoff because you're increasing water absorption. You're actually bringing back you know, on a macroclimate level, you know, better local uh, rainfall cycles. You know, what we do with farming today actually has created macroclimates that, are, uh, that, that push away rain as opposed to support the development of rain. A little shift in how we farm means we're able to have all these great impacts in health, in our oceans, in our local water quality, in the health of the people who we depend on for our food, in the health of all of us who eat that food. And on top of all of this, within just a couple decades of shifting, and this is about a 1% shift per year of our existing farmland from conventional to regenerative, we can actually reverse and begin to sequester the excess carbon that is in our atmosphere. We could stop tomorrow using carbon-based fuels, stop burning oil, everything, and we still don't solve our problem. But within a couple decades of regenerative practices and changing how we steward our land, we can actually reach a period within our lifetimes where we experience global cooling. And it's not global cooling along the lines of an ice age, it's actually bringing down our greenhouse gas load to a point where we were just a few decades ago. 
You know, we look at the separation of animals from the land. That's been a big problem. You know, feedlots are very, very efficient from a cost point of view, especially uh, with the subsidization of corn and soy, which happens in the U.S. and in other countries. But the cost of that, where 70% of the agriculture produced is going to cattle and other livestock that are separated from the land, is incredibly devastating. But pretty much any animal, any, any livestock, any poultry, that are integrated with the land actually are carbon negative. They're part of a system, again, a natural balance has been here for, well, again, before our time. And when you take these animals off the feedlot and integrate them correctly with the land that's, that is there for their, you know, I guess, their, their sustenance, their uh, you know, produce, it's pretty amazing to see that these animals, not only you know, can they feed us, not only uh, can this be done without grain and corn and, and, and soy and such, but these animals are part of the regenerative process. Our lands can't come back without the integration of animals with the land. And you go from, certainly with beef and cattle, something that's very greenhouse gas intensive to something that's actually carbon negative. You actually have carbon sink when those animals are integrated with the land. You don't have to uh, believe in global warming. You don't have to uh, have a care about the humane treatment of animals, which is absolutely a benefit of uh, regenerative farming. You can look at so many different areas that this touches, you know, economically, again, health-wise, water quality. You know, it's it's a, an across-the-board solution that I, I don't believe anybody out there you know, could have an opposition to. In the U.S., we've made incredible strides, you know, getting in front of Congress, and having bipartisan support and bipartisan recognition of what regenerative farming and agriculture can do and why it's important. It's taken a long time to get here, but we can very quickly and very economically you know, shift you know, in this direction. It's so easy to, to blame oil or you know, other carbon, uh, how to say, base uses for the problems that we have today. I mean, when there's an oil spill, I mean, it's, I mean, those make headlines for the, the animals that wash up on the shore. I mean, it's, it really is, I mean, it's, it's tragic. But this hidden tragedy of, you know, what's happening you know, to our soil and the impact you know, of, of, of not maintaining our soil correctly, that's a tragedy that, you know, really has been kept tightly under wraps. We cannot continue, you know, this conventional means. So this film, you know, I was, it was really something I, I'm very glad I was able to get involved with. It certainly changed uh, you know, my course in a lot of things. Uh, when you look at you know, all the problems that we face and you know, the different solutions that were out there, nothing really it looked like it had a great chance of changing the course that we were on. And then you find out you know, just taking our carbon content in our soil up to 2%, we're able to then sequester more carbon you know, than we output per year today. And that's all through you know, the power of you know, what's here through nature. Soil is a very powerful thing. It, it feeds us, it provides for animals, it provides, you know, honestly, the, uh, the solution that's gonna ensure that we have a, a great day tomorrow. My name is Larry O'Connor. Glad to have again, gotten involved with this Kiss the Ground and you know, we're making big strides in the U.S. Europe has got an amazing uh, opportunity you know, with great farmland, with you know, great practices and, and great innovation already. Let's see that Europe continues to move in the right direction, halts things you know, far uh, sooner than, uh, than what we did in the U.S. and can lead this world in you know, a better way to farm and a better way to, uh, to work with animals. Thank you.